Hello and welcome. In this session, we are going to be setting up a new project in the BitTide and Migration Wiz tool for OneDrive and SharePoint. And looking at the prerequisites we might need to do on the tenant to allow the application to have access into the data and really what needs to be done. You may already be familiar with setting up modern auth on mailbox migrations. For OneDrive and SharePoint, we don't need to do the modern auth. We actually use application permissions based directly into M365. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But uh, why I bring that up is that there is some requirements around MFA. So that service account that we use. So in our little example here, we have our migration with test um, service account set up. We have made sure that MFA is not enabled on that one and the security defaults are turned off in the tenant. So that's all good. But there's a few things we need to do. So let me take you through those as we go through and create this project. And one of the things for the service account is it does not need to be an admin and it does not need to have a license applied to it either. If it does have a license and it does have admin, well, that's fine. You can go ahead with that, but it doesn't actually require it. So before we actually go ahead and hit the create project, what I want to show you is that if you look at the help center, and if I scroll up to the top of this one, you can see where it's come from. So formal migration, the OneDrive and SharePoint migrations, and the migration planning. The part we want to look at is just down here a little bit, talking about the source and the destination permissions. So I'm going to run through these, but this is where we grab the uh, link from, which I'm about to show you. We're going to go and grab this link address from here. Copy that, and I'm going to paste it into a fresh window here, which will ask us to confirm the permissions we're going to give. And you can see it's giving SharePoint full control. And we say accept on that. And that will obviously go ahead and do that for us and drop us back to that main screen, which we can then close. And what we can do here is we can go into the Azure Active Directory. And what we should find is if we have a look at the applications, let's have a look those apps. And you can see there it is there. That's the one we've just added. So later on, if you want to remove that or you know, once the migration is complete, you can go in and you can dig that out there. But that's where you find it if you want to go looking for it. But the next step is we need to go back to our admin console here and we're going to go into the into groups we need to add a security group for migration with so i'm going to go and add a group and it will be security and it just needs to be called migration with no space in there just that description and next create group and close that yeah. now under here with the Group itself, we would go in and add as a member the migration with account, which is that little service account. If we just put MigWiz, so add MigWiz here. There it is. Add that in. And that is now a member of that group. And close that and Come back out. So we do need to go and do that on the destination tenant as well. So in the background here, I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and then we can start making this project. All right. So we're going to hit the create project now. Now we've got those little prereqs done in the background, and it's going to be a document project because what we want to do here is for this OneDrive migration, we're going to take that uh, uh, account we had in previous demos, which is the John Smith. Um, we're going to migrate them from the Zootrope account to the Palladium.com, and this is obviously the setup. So we give it a project name and we'll grab YouTube. We've had that set up already. And the endpoint. So we're going to start a new endpoint. And we'll call this one the OneDrive. Like so, and we will tell it that it is a OneDrive for business migration we're doing. And this is where we'd give it the YouTube.com with that. So Password. So add that in. Next step, same thing, we'll do new endpoint, and that's going to be on the destination side. That's that Planium M365, which will also be drive for business too. 
You can see we've got some different uh, options here. We're going to choose this top one, which is the, the full version, document permission versions and metadata, which is good. And we'll give this one use.com and that. Now, depending on the size of the migration you're doing, you can use the provided Azure storage, which is, is good if you've got under five gig of data. If you want to do a lot more data, uh, increase the speed of it, you can use your own Azure based storage, which is where you do the custom storage and give it a storage account name and the access key, which you'd get from the, from the storage function. But this one, I'm just going to use the standard provided Azure storage. Now here we'll just hit the save and go to the summary. But I do need to go back into the section here for the advanced options because there's an important one we need to put in. As you'll see on that help desk article, we need to have this little guy, copy that, and put that into here as well. So that is important to do. So hit save and save our project. There you go. Now I can do a quick add in here, and I could put a demo user in that we can play with and do, but I want to show you something else here. If we use this option, add from MSP complete, now this will link itself to other projects you've got based on the login you have into Migration Wars and give you the option to select them from other migration projects that you've been working on. So you'd be aware that obviously we did a mailbox migration in our last session. So what I'm looking for here is if I say add from MSP complete, that we can find John Smith from the other migration. So that's a, a nice little trick to sort of bring somebody in nice and quickly. And, uh, and you can see there he is. So when you bring in those items from MSP complete, you can see the destination email has picked up the zeotrope, which you need to change. So what you do here is you just grab everybody and hit the change domain option. And we would then change the destination. You can see to the planium.com, hit save and close, and that will then go through and update all those addresses. So really you can see that's good if the prefix of the UPN is staying the same. If not, just do the normal bulk add or CSV or however when you get the you want to get them into your project. But um, either way, that is in there now. So we can select this guy and we can start the verifying credentials. And that's just going to go ahead and check that the application permissions that we've done are correct. The security group's correct. The service account is good. It can access things with the password and the like. So we will just hit OK. That'll go to a submitted stage. And we'll come back in a short time and see if that has completed successfully. And a refresh on that screen, you can see it now says completed verification. So we are good to go with that OneDrive migration. Now do remember that the OneDrive process inside MigrationWiz does not provision the OneDrives for you on the target. So you're gonna to need to go and do that. There's some scripts available, obviously, it's just a one line PowerShell to, to provision them on that side of the house, but uh, uh, migration with will require them to be an open OneDrive so you can put data in there. But what I want to do now is this is all good for the OneDrive. The SharePoint side is exactly the same uh, application permissions we've given on both tenants. So I'm now going to go and create a SharePoint project and show that one running through as well. Here we go back up here and create a project and that will again be a document project and we'll put in the details here we call it Zeotrobe SharePoint customer Zeotrobe and hit next now the endpoint here will create a new one and we'll give that a name let's call it m365 SharePoint and we'll give it a type which will be SharePoint here now for the URL that is going to be the tenant name along with the SharePoint.com so that is important to get that Right. So that will be theatro.sharepoint.com. And then our version is theatro.com. Password, obviously. So add that in. That'll go ahead. Our next step is to define the endpoint on the target tenant. We'll do a new one as well and give that a name which will be the Planium SharePoint, and that will be SharePoint Online as the target. And here, once again, very, very similar. We give it, which will be slightly different. This is the name of that tenant, and obviously, version is 
Um, right. So, now we will go to our summary page here because once again there is something important we have to do in the options. So go through, we'll go in here, which is the use application permission. Now this is telling the system to use the application permissions that we've applied from the uh, the enterprise app that we put on slightly earlier, which is the same as the OneDrive. Without this, you'll get all kinds of little errors in terms of which one it's looking for. So this is quite important to make sure that is correct. So we'll hit save there. And we'll save the project and come in and obviously we get a, a blank screen as normal. Now I should add here as well, it's important that that migration with service account has access into the SharePoint sites too. It's good to um, have them as a SharePoint administrator. That's always a nice thing to put in because what it will allow us to do is auto discover. So you can see here, we can hit discover, save typing in the names or bringing them in somewhere else. We just hit start auto discover and it will go and look at all the SharePoint sites that exist in that tenant and bring them up for us. And this really is the first test we can do to make sure that everything is good in terms of service accounts and the like, because if that completes fine with no errors, obviously it has access into those SharePoint items. It's found nine, so I'm just going to say yes, we'll import those in. We do have to bring them all in as a bulk drop, so if you had a lot, you're going to get a lot in there, but you can always clean them out and just delete them. Yeah. But you can see there's all our, our SharePoint sites. The one I'm interested in just doing a test with is this one here. Testing site shared documents, which is a very a small one. And you can see if I go to the SharePoint Admin Center, you can see there it is there. It's only got a couple of files in it, but it's it's worthwhile for testing. It's been created on the target tenant as well, so it lives there as well. Just to show you that on the target side, you can see it is living there as well as just drop that one away. Now I'll go back to the console here and I will just hit box here and we'll do a start and say verify credentials and that will again like we did with the OneDrive check that it can see both sides both tenants it's got all the permissions it needs and everything is going to work well for it and there you can see after a refresh that is now completed that verification so now that is ready to go ahead with a migration we are all set up and ready to go so as a recap on this session what we've done is we've applied the, the OneDrive and SharePoint application permissions through the uh, through the application into the source and the destination uh, tenants. Uh, we've set up the migration with service account. We've added it to the security group called migration with. We've also added that use application uh, sorry use application permission equals one inside the advanced settings as well on both the OneDrive and the SharePoint advanced options. Uh, so we are really good to go. We can continue with the migration of OneDrive and SharePoint and go ahead as we see fit. Cool. Finish up this session now. Thank you for watching and we will talk to you again soon. Thank you.